Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the In the Ring Show with your host, Devious Damien. This is going to be my review of uh, tonight's uh, Night of Champions pay-per-view. Now, before I begin my review, I would just like to apologize to all my viewers and subscribers for, you know, not making videos uh, for a while. I've just had a lot of things going on in my life, you know, and I just really haven't had much time, you know, to make wrestling videos. So, you know, I, I do apologize for being silent for so long. Um, I'm going to make another video, I don't know when, probably sometime this week, about a rather controversial issue. I'm not going to tell you what yet. You'll just have to wait and find out for yourself. Now, back to my United Champions review. I've got to say that going into this pay-per-view, the only reason I decided that it was worth dropping 50 bucks on this thing was for Punk and Cena and the four-way. And those two matches delivered. There was a couple other decent matches in there, too. Um, but anyway, let's get to the review. So we we lead off the show with the Fatal 4-Way with Sin Cara, The Miz, Rey Mysterio, and Cody Rhodes for the Intercontinental Championship. And The Miz retains after a skull cartoon finale on uh, Cody Rhodes. And what was a decent match, um, you know, Sin Cara did pretty well for himself. Uh, Sin Cara and Rey Mysterio got to go at it for a little while, which I thought was a really good thing to see. Even though I would actually much rather see Mysterio and Sin Cara as a tag team. But, you know, hey, it is what it is. Decent match. Miz retained. Not to anyone's surprise, I'm sure. So the next we had... Kofi Kingston and R-Truth against Daniel Bryan and Kane for the uh, Tag Team Championships. And ta uh, the Tag Team Championships changed hands tonight. Daniel Bryan and Kane won, which, again, to nobody's surprise, really. Uh, you know, and of course, Daniel Bryan and Kane did their little, you know, feuding and fighting during the match, but still somehow came to win. So I'm kind of, I, I admit I am a little bit interested to see where they're going with this whole storyline here. Earlier in the night, on the if you watched the pre-show on YouTube, you saw Zack Ryder win the uh, Battle Royal to go on to challenge Antonio Cesaro for the United States title tonight. Now, I was highly disappointed in this match, only because I thought it was kind of a waste to have Zack Ryder go over just to have him lose. And, you know, it, and it's pretty sad when you have in Cesaro, you know, have to have help from Oksana to beat Zack Ryder. So you're going to tell me that your champion needs help from a woman to beat somebody who hasn't been hardly relevant on TV in how long? I'm not saying that that's right. I'm not saying I like it. I'm just saying it because it's the truth. So... They just kind of just shit all over Cesaro as the U.S. champion, in my opinion here. Plus, I also think that as much as I like Zack Ryder, they kind of wasted an opportunity here because they had Tyson Kidd and Brodus Clay confronting Cesaro on SmackDown, and yet they didn't have either one of them win the Battle Royal. I just thought it was kind of stupid logic and throwing away what could have potentially been a good match, especially if Tyson Kidd had won. But anyway, moving on. Dolph Ziggler versus Randy Orton. Um, honestly, I had to step away from the the show for a little while. I didn't get to see much of this one. Um, I saw that Randy Orton won, uh, so I really can't really say how good the match was. Um, I can only say that Randy Orton won. That's pretty much all I really know about it. Layla versus Eve Torres. <laughs> The match itself wasn't bad, but I'm shaking my head because I'm, a, I'm against creative decision with this. And I'll tell you why. I should have known that the instant it came out that Caitlyn's winning the Battle Royale was a botch. I should have known that somehow they would pull the plug on this whole thing and they'd throw somebody in there that we've already seen as Divas Champion several times before. Or at least, you know, in title matches. And sure as shit, what the fuck did we get? <laughs> little fucking XLA 
cheerleader or whatever, LA Lakers or whatever. I know she was a former cheerleader somewhere, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Eve. Like, we haven't seen this dumb bitch trotted out there as the Divas champion how many fucking times. You know, and I know some people are going to say, well, what did Caitlyn have to do to deserve it? Okay, maybe she didn't do so much to deserve it, but god damn it, it's, it was a new, it was somebody new, alright? It wasn't the same old shit out there time and time again. And, see, Eve, Eve is one of the reasons I think Triple H wants to kill the Divas di Division. It's true. I'm sorry. You know, male wrestling fans, at least I would like to think, that they expect more from females that wrestle than just eye candy. You know, I, I'm i sorry, but when I see a woman wrestling, I actually want to know she has wrestling ability. I just don't want her out there because, you know, she she has tits and ass to fill an outfit. I mean, shit, if I want that, I'll go buy Playboy or... You know, I'll go buy the Maxim or FHM or, you know, whatever. Point is, you know, if I want models, I'll go buy a magazine to see models. If I am if I want a women wrestling, I want women who can wrestle. Too much to ask WWE? I shouldn't think so. Next, we had Sheamus versus Alberto Del Rio. Now, I really... I'm not really sure what I think about this one. The match was good, but the the creative team, for whatever reason, decided to take what was interesting about this match going in and totally ruin it. You know, the bro kick being banned, I actually thought that was the most interesting part of the match. I actually thought that, hey, you know what, this could actually make the match worth watching. You know, it was a new twist to it. But then what happens? They decide that we're going to have Booker T trot out there and say the bro kick's reinstated. <sighs> well, you just took what was an interesting concept for the match. You just sh shot it right or just chucked it right out the fucking window. And you made the match predictable. Because as soon as the bro kick gets reinstated, if you did not see Sheamus winning with the bro kick at the end, then you're fucking blind. Actually, you're worse than blind. Whatever worse than blind is, that's what you are if you did not see that coming. Just saying. And hopefully this puts an end to Sheamus versus Del Rio. I am sick of this fucking feud. It's stupid. It's gone on too long. You know, end it already, for fuck's sake, please. So next we had CM Punk versus John Cena. It was a decent match. You know, we, he had uh, Punk coming out with the Yankees pinstripes. Uh, John Cena. I actually have to admit, it was hard for me to, you know, shit on Cena tonight because he came out wearing that Rise Above Cancer thing and the Don't Give Up thing. I actually thought that that is a really good message considering, you know, breast cancer. The only thing I didn't like that the WWE did tonight was they, they made it sound like only women can get breast cancer. And even though maybe, you know, women are obviously more likely to get it than men are, still it does not, that doesn't mean it's impossible for a man to get it. I mean, so I just think that that, you know, is crap that they only, you know, make it for women. But anyway, that's not the point. Um... So, with this match, we saw it go back and forth. But, okay, I will say one negative thing about Cena, as far as his in-ring work went tonight. Well, that's actually in general. So, somebody needs to teach John Cena how to sell. Okay, because there's one thing I've noticed when it comes to John Cena selling. He either sells dead, or he doesn't sell at all. And... Because you notice, like, he'll sell dead for a second, but then when he's supposed to come back, he springs to his feet like nothing happened to him. He springs to his feet, he sprints over, does what he's supposed to do, and he did it tonight against Punk. Punk hits a rock bottom. As soon as uh, Cena was supposed to do something, Cena just sprung up like like he wasn't even hit. Like, he sprung, he, uh, sprung up, sprinted over, and I, well, I think he gave Punk the A, if I remember correctly. But the point is, you know... 
This is some of the reason that Cena gets booed. No, People get sick of the Super Cena routine. And that's exactly what he looks like when he does that. I mean, I'm sorry. How? If you think about this in terms of a real fight, if it's a real fight, who the hell gets beat up that much and then just springs to their feet as if nothing happened? I'm sorry. No, nobody would do that in a real fight. It just wouldn't happen. And yet we're supposed to believe that, you know, as strong as he is, that Cena is just, you know, like, we're supposed to believe, like, what, his bones are made of fucking adamantium or something? Like, he's fucking, like, what, he has adamantium skeleton, like Wolverine from X-Men or something? Or, or like, what, he's, he's Superman, he's got, like, skin of steel or something? In mean, Christ, come on. But anyway, um, Punk retained due to a draw, which wasn't a surprise. I'm, you know, I did not think that uh, Cena was going to win the title tonight. Honestly, I don't see Cena winning the uh, WWE Championship till at least uh, WrestleMania of next year. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, Night of Champions, I won't say it was great, but it was it was better than most B level WWE pay per views. Uh, most of their B level pay per views are god awful. They're hard. They're sometimes they're they're harder to watch than Raw or SmackDown. Um, but this one was okay. I mean, like I said, it wasn't great, but it was decent. I guess if I had to give a dollar value to what I actually thought Night of Champions was worth, um, I guess I go thirty-five to forty, maybe. Um, because like I said, it, it was a decent show. Um, I, you know, it's not a show that I, I would say, hey, you know, it's a, it was fifty bucks well spent. Boy, I'm glad I did it. I, I wouldn't say it entirely, but you know, if I were to place a price figure, like I said, thirty between thirty five and forty, it was decent. Um, but anyway, those are my thoughts on uh tonight's pay per view. Let me know what you think, uh, what you thought of the pay per view. If you saw it, if you didn't, what you think of my review? Um, you know. Just, you know, let me know what you thought of the, the like I said, the pay-per-view, my review. Sorry for repeating myself. I'm just kind of stumbling on my words here. I don't know what to say. Excuse me. Um, I, there is one thing I want to address before I uh, end this video. I would like to apologize for, you know, not always, you know, do, once again, I'm going to apologize for not always doing videos. And in the, uh, the controversial video I'm going to be doing later this week... It, I'm going to state an opinion that I've had for years, and I've never expressed the opinion I'm going to express later this week, because, you know, I just I just thought it wasn't a popular opinion to express, and I thought better of it. However, in my opinion, me not expressing my opinion, no matter how unpopular it may be, to me, by not doing so... I've done a disservice to my viewers and subscribers because I like to think that one reason my viewers and subscribers watch me is because that whether they like what I'm going to say, whether they don't, whether they think I'm right, whether they think I'm wrong, whatever, you can count on one thing with me, and that is I don't bullshit. You may think my opinion is bullshit, that's your, and you're entitled to that opinion, but I do not say anything that I don't believe to be true. I don't bullshit. And I usually have a pretty good reasoning for thinking the way I do think about something. So, I, I apologize for not, you know, being honest with my opinion that I'm going to express later in the week. You will not get that from me again. I will tell you from now on exactly what I think about anything. Whether you like it, whether you don't like it, you can count on me to be honest and not bullshit with my opinion any further. That's like I said before, that's a disservice to you viewers, and I sincerely apologize. That This will never happen again. Because you, I think you watch me because I don't bullshit, and you enjoy that about me. So I'm going to stick to that theory. I will not bullshit any further. So, you know, just let me know, you know, if there's anything you'd like to hear me talk about, you know, drop a comment or a message, whatever. Say, hey, Damien, you know, 
this is something that I, you know, I like to know your opinion on, you know, this, or I like to know your opinion on that. Um, you know, if it's something I haven't talked about, if it's something you want to hear me talk about, just drop me a line and, you know, I'll uh, give my honest opinion on it. But, you know, that's, again, that's where it is with that. So, anyway, for this edition of the In the Ring Show, this is Devious Damien signing out. Good night, everybody.